Hello everyone, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Michael and today I thought I'd make another pot of soup and I thought I would bring back a memory from my childhood and that is going to be an alphabet soup. So if you've never made alphabet soup before, stick with me and I'm going to show you how to make that. And let's get started with our ingredients here. We don't have a lot of ingredients. So I've got a uh, half of a large onion here. So if you've got about a medium onion, that would be perfect. And we're going to dice that down. I'm just going to take that outer skin off of that and we're just going to give that several cuts down through here and get that down to a nice size dice on that for our soup. All right, now that we've got our onions cut up now, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my carrots. I've got two about medium-sized carrots here, or if you've got one really big carrot, you can do that. I want to kind of keep the same consistency with our onions that we've got with our carrots, and I've got some celery here, and that's going to make our mirepoix. So you want to kind of keep that consistent with those. So I'm going to go ahead and take the outer skin off these carrots and then I'm going to give them a little wash and we'll dice them up also. All right, now that I've got the skin off the outside of my carrots and I've got them a good little wash, I'm going to take the ends of these off. And with these, I'm going to cut these into quarters. That way I can keep a good consistency with those. And you just want to take those and kind of cut them up in the same size that you would have cut your onions up. And if you've got one of the really fat little carrots like I've got here, you can take those if you've got some bigger chunks on it and take that and just kind of cut those up a little bit more. That way you can get nice sized pieces on your spoon when you're getting ready to eat your soup. All right, so I've got one of those cut up now. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same to the other one. All right, now that we've got our carrots diced up now, I've got three stalks of celery here, and I've given them a good little rinse off of those. So we're we'll look at those. Those are about medium size. They're not very big stalks of celery. I'm just going to take the ends off of those. Then I'm going to take each one of these, and I'm going to slice it down the middle, and we'll cut those up into the same size bite-sized pieces that we've got for our carrots and our onions. All right, now that we've got our celery cut up here, I've got three cloves of garlic, and I'm just going to take that, cut the ends off of those, and take that outer skin off of that. Once we've got that outer skin removed, we're just going to take these and dice up this garlic. Now that I've got my garlic minced up now, I've got two white potatoes, and these, you know, fit about the palm of the size of your hand. And I'm going to take those, and I'm going to take the skin off the outside of those, and I'm going to dice these up. And you want these into bite-sized pieces as well. This is one of these soups that's going to come together really quickly, so you want to have everything prepped and ready to go. That way when you turn your pot on, everything starts going in, and it'll be done in just a few minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and take this skin off and give these a little bit of a wash, and we'll come back, and I'll dice these up. All right, now that I've got my potatoes peeled, I'm going to cut these up probably in about a little half-inch slices, and then I'm going to come in and cut them up again. So... We get nice sized pieces on those. With the potatoes, depending on what kind you get, uh, some of them might cook down on you. So this is the size pieces I'm going to have in mind here. The white potatoes or the yellow Yukon Golds do really well with that. So whatever potato you got on hand, if you want to use the little baby uh, potatoes, you can definitely use those. But just cut them up so that you know they don't cook down. If you're using uh, one of these uh, baking potatoes or something that might release a lot of starch and cook down on you. So just cut them the way you like. All right, now that I've got my potatoes cut up, I'm going to go ahead and put those into a bowl here that's got some water. If you don't put them in water, if you're not going to be cooking with them just in the next few seconds, uh, they will start to oxidize on you. And so just definitely put them in some water. And when you get ready to start cooking them, we'll take them out of the water and we'll put them into our pot to start cooking. All right, we've got all of our vegetables cut up now and I'm gonna go ahead and turn my pot on here. I'm gonna turn it up on high and I'm gonna put just a little bit of oil, olive oil in the bottom of it. That way when we put our onions and our carrots and our celery in, they'll be able to cook nicely in that. So we're gonna wait that to warm up a little bit before we put our onions in. So I'll be back in just a second when that gets warmed up. All right, I've got my pan here heated up with the oil in it, and let's go ahead and add our onions and our carrots and our celery. All right, now let's give this a stir around. And we want to cook these for about five to eight minutes, and we'll keep stirring these around. We want to get these carrots and the celery and the onions to get soft on us, so keep stirring on these for about five to eight minutes. All right, now that I've got my celery, onions, and carrots cooked down, I'm going to go ahead now and add my garlic. You don't want to add the garlic in 
uh, at the beginning because garlic has a tendency to want to try to burn. So you want to put that in at the very end there when you're cooking that. And we're just going to stir that around for about a minute just to kind of release some of those oils out of that garlic and get some of that flavor going into our mixture. All right, we've got our garlic cooked now. Now let's go ahead and put the other parts of our seasonings in there. I've got two teaspoons of oregano. We'll add that in. I've got two teaspoons of dried basil. We'll add that in. I've got one teaspoon of marjoram. We'll add that in. And I've got one teaspoon of crushed rosemary leaves and we'll add that in and just kind of give that a stir around to get all of that incorporated the aroma coming off those seasonings already is really making this smell really nice in here so definitely keep a stir on those we don't want, don't want to mix that in there and then leave them to burn so definitely keep a stir on them now i've got two tablespoons of tomato paste so we'll add that into it and give that a stir around all right, now I've got one can of diced tomatoes, and this is a 14.5 ounce can. If you want to use fresh, you can definitely do that. That'd be about four or five of the smaller tomatoes, or if we're using the Romas, maybe about six, and just give that a good stir through. We want to wake those tomatoes up in there. All right, now that we've got our tomatoes in, I've got one can of cannellini beans, and I'm going to go and rinse those and drain those out and we'll be putting those into our pot. All right, I've got my beans now drained and rinsed, and I'm gonna go ahead and put those into my pot now and give those a good stir through. All right, now that we've got our beans in now, I'm gonna be adding in six cups of vegetable stock, and this is my homemade vegetable stock. If you haven't seen that recipe on how I make that, I'll put that link in the description box below. You can check out that video. You can definitely make your own homemade vegetable stock if you like, or you can buy the store-bought. It's completely up to you, and that's six cups. I'm gonna go get me four more. All right, now that we've got our vegetable stock in, I'm gonna take my potatoes now, and we'll add that into our mixture. And you can take a look at it and see if you wanna add some more potatoes in it. This is the time you can do that. You definitely can put more of those in there if you like. And depending on how much seasoning or salt that you had in your vegetable stock, if you bought the commercial ones, you definitely don't want to add any salt in it until you give it a taste because those do come with a little bit of salt in them and your beans might have some salt in them as well. That's why I took them and rinsed them just so that we can control all of that. And then your tomato paste might have some salt in it. So now when you want to season to taste and we're going to put salt and pepper in, I'm going to bring this up to a boil and then I'm going to give this a taste and we're going to add salt and pepper if we need to. All right, I've got my soup now to a boil. I did give it a taste and I did add about a teaspoon of salt and a little bit of pepper to it. So at this point, definitely give your uh, soup a try to see if you need to add any seasonings to it. And if you wanted to add chicken stock instead of the uh, vegetable stock that I put in it, if you wanted to put chicken stock in it, that would be really good as well. And so now I'm going to turn this down and I'm going to let this cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. Come back and check on it. I'm going to put the lid on it and we're going to make sure those potatoes are done. That's what we're waiting on now is for the potatoes to get done. So once you can stick a toothpick or a fork in them and they break up on you there, 15 or 20 minutes down on medium, medium low. And uh, Keep stirring on it occasionally, and we'll come back and we'll add our next ingredients in it. Stick with me. I am back, and my potatoes are done. They did take about 20 minutes to cook on that. So I'm going to show you something else here. I've got the bag of these alphabet uh, letters here that I'm going to be putting into my soup. And with these, this is a 7 ounce. It's just a little over a cup of those. And I'm going to do something a little different with those. I've got some butter, and I've got a pan here. I'm going to melt that down. And I'm going to roast the noodles before I put them in my soup. That brings out just a little bit more flavor to them. And it brings out that little bit extra. This is completely optional. If you don't want to do that, you can definitely just put your noodles right into the pot itself. But I'm going to melt this and give these a little bit of a toasting here. And I'll show you what that looks like when we're done. All right, now that I've got my butter melted, I'm just going to add my pasta into the pan here and just give that a little stir around. Just to give that a little bit of a toast. It just makes that little bit of a nuttiness that it'll have to it. And I know that you all like this extra little step, but definitely this is optional. If you don't want to do that, you can definitely just put that into your soup just the way that it is. So you don't want to cook this for very long, maybe a minute or two, just to kind of give it a little browning. And we're going to toast this pasta. All right, I've got my pasta now toasted. I wanted to show you what that looked like. It did get a little bit darker color than it was when it started. And we do have some darker pieces in there, which is good. That's, like I said earlier, that's going to give that little bit of that nuttier taste to it. So we're going to add that in now. 
to our soup. Now that we've got that added to our soup, we'll just give that a little stir around. And the package instructions on that says to cook it between 10 to 13 minutes. I don't let it cook that long. I like it on the al dente side. So three to five minutes is all you'd need to do with that. So I'm going to put the lid on it and we're going to let this cook for another three minutes. I am back and my pasta has been cooking for about four minutes now and I wanted to show you what that looks like. Give it a good stir around here. That looks and smells incredible. And so now I've got about a cup and a half, maybe two cups of spinach here. I've just grabbed a couple of handfuls of it and give it a little bit of a rinse. Any way that you can add any kind of greens or any more vitamins to your meals, this is an opportunity to do it. So we're just going to put that in. That looks like a lot, but it will wilt down pretty quickly. And uh, you'll be surprised. You'll think that I even put any in it. So definitely let that cook for just a second. We'll stir that in. We'll put the top on it and I'll let that sit there for another two or three minutes and we'll be ready for our taste test. Stick with me. I am back and I wanted to show you what my soup looks like. It is absolutely incredible. And those little alphabets have puffed up now in the soup and you can see those. Take a look at that. You couldn't tell where they were before, but now that they've been in there, you can really see them now. And this looks like an incredible soup. It's a nice hearty stock on that. So let's get me out a couple of big spoons of this and let this cool off a little bit and give this a taste test. That looks absolutely incredible. All of those seasonings in there, I can definitely smell all of that coming through there. We've got our potatoes and we've got those extra greens in there of that spinach. I'm going to let this cool down and we'll come back in just a second. All right, I've got my soup here. It has cooled down just a little bit. I still see some steam coming off of it, so I want to be careful with that. Mmm. Wow. That is absolutely delicious. All those flavors are coming through. Those tomatoes, that celery, the carrots, the potatoes. You can see it here on my spoon. I'll see if I can't get some of it up. It reminds me of what we used to get when I was a kid growing up. So definitely, I want you to try this recipe. I know you're going to love it. And I'd love to hear from you. So leave me a comment how yours turned out and if you did anything different. Or if you make alphabet soup, what do you do different to yours? I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, maybe you might consider giving me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And check out one of these other two videos over here on the side. You might find something else you like. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Check out my alphabet soup. Bring back those memories and create new ones. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye now.